The question of members of the Security Council have recorded their support of this principle by their action in this case. One permanent member of the Security Council, however, has three times vetoed the efforts of the Council to deal with the situation. The United States, the large powers, bear special responsibilities because of their strength and resources. The great, while these responsibilities bring with them special advantages, the great powers must recognize that restraint is an essential companion of power and privilege. The United Nations will never endure if there is insistence on privilege to the point of frustration of the collective will. In this spirit, we have indicated our own willingness to accept a modification of our special voting rights in the Security Council. In the system, and in all matters, to use their privileged position to promote the attainment of the purposes of the organization. I have been asked by the President of the United States to extend to you the cordial greetings of the government and people of the United States as well as his own warm personal welcome. <coughs> We're happy to have you with us in this country. We trust that your stay will be productive of the far-reaching results which the peoples of all countries expect from this gathering. Growing volume of the United Nations business. We have not yet succeeded in establishing a basis for peace with Germany and Japan nor have we restored Austria as an independent state. Reconstruction lags everywhere. The basic requirements of life are scarce. There is desperate need throughout great areas. The complex economic machinery which was thrown out of joint by the war has not yet been put back into running order. In place of peace, liberty, economic that for one nation to arm or otherwise assist rebellious forces against another government is a hostile and aggressive act. Not only has this principle been upheld in a number of famous cases in international law, but it has also found expression in international agreements. The state's delegation will therefore submit to the assembly a resolution which will contain a finding of responsibility. Call upon our Albania, Bulgaria, and Yugoslavia to assistance, cease and desist from rendering further assistance or support to the guerrillas in Greece. Establish a commission to assist in the implementation of these recommendations and to investigate the facts with regard to compliance therewith. And make other appropriate recommendations to the states concerned. The General Assembly is also faced with the problem of Palestine of the General Assembly to assist in finding a solution for this difficult problem which has stirred up such violent passions and which is now resulting in the shedding of blood and in great mental and moral anguish. The solution will require of each of us courage and resolution. It will also require restraint. The Special Committee on Palestine is definite progress. We realize that whatever the solution recommended by the General Assembly, it cannot be ideally satisfactory to either of the two great peoples primarily concerned. While the final decision of this is must properly await the detailed consideration of the report, the government of the United States gives great weight not only to the recommendations which have met with the unanimous approval of the Special Committee, but also to those which have been approved by the majority of that committee. I turn now to the Moscow Agreement. For about two years, the United States government has been trying to reach agreement with the Soviet government through the Joint Commission and otherwise on methods of implementing the Moscow Agreement and thus bringing about the independence of Korea. The United States representatives have insisted that any settlement of the Korean problem must in no way infringe the fundamental democratic right of freedom of opinion. That is still the position of my government. Today, the independence of Korea
continued is no further advanced than it was two years ago. Korea remains divided at the 38th parallel with the Soviet forces in the industrial north and the United States forces in the agricultural south. There is little or no 